Good day and welcome back. Today I've got a Philips radiogram. Now, I've done a few of these before. This is the first time I've had the full cabinet, but I have done the uh, tuner and the record player before. So I'm not going to redo everything. Uh, this has got some problems. We'll troubleshoot the problems, make it all work and put it back together. If you want to watch one of the other videos where I did an in-depth repair on this, uh, there's a link up the top corner here. These are a nice unit. I wouldn't mind one of these myself. It's got a couple of big drivers. I think they're 12-inch drivers per side, uh, a mid-range and a tweeter. Um, it's AM only, and of course it's stereo if it's using the record player. Here's the tuner, and it's got bass treble balance, volume of course, on off, and tuning, and I think that's broken. On the left-hand side of the set, it's got little plug access plugs here to put guitars or microphones, whatever you like. So some five-pin dins in there has a little fancy light display there. I've never seen that work, so I'm not sure what that does. And the set is called a Glidomatic. And it's called a Glidomatic because it has this little mechanically linked door system that reveals the record player. If nothing else, that's one of the reasons I like it. <laughs> the record player is a Philips AG1025. I've done these before. As I said, I'll get it working. I'm not going to show you the whole rebuilding. You can look at the earlier video if you want to do that. Behind the record players is a quilted material. That's supposed to deaden the sound, any sound coming from the record player feeding back into the radio, apparently. So I'll close that up again. Very cool. Uh, the owner said the left channel is not working on this. I think it was the left, that might be the right. Uh, he said it's not working. So I've got my field uh, dim bulb here. I'll plug that in, we'll give it a try. Here's the radio, I'll turn that on. Uh, nothing happened in the dial lights there. I can't see any dial lights. Now this is a valve set, so I think it's seven valves. So I'll give it a minute to warm up. Oops, I got it on gram. Put it on radio. That doesn't work, does it? I can hear something. I'll put the mic to the right channel. That's working. Left channel. Nothing there. I'll adjust the balance. That is right. Still working. There's left, there's nothing. So definitely the left channel's not working. I'll glide open the record player. I'll put it over to gram. Let's just see if the stylus is working. Okay, so we're getting out of the right channel again. I'll put the balance to left. And there's nothing. So it's in the amp. I'll take the tuner out, put it on my bench and try it there. A lot of YouTube channels speed up this process. I don't do that normally. I maybe put one or two second cuts of me taking screws out or something. So I thought today I might try the speed up method. I'll take the knobs off, take off the back of the cabinet and pull the tuner out. I've set the chassis up on my workbench, so let's put some power on it. I'll keep it in dim bulb. 230, that should be enough, 237. And the bulb's behaving normally. It's on radio. Let's turn it up, that's fully up, okay. These are all balanced, okay, so... I can hear some hum. I'll have to adjust the tuning by hand. Yeah, something. That's working. Good afternoon, Mercedes. Good afternoon. Oh, you can talk to each other. Yeah, you can. Um, you've got to be looking at each other so you can kind of get them. I've set the two speakers at the back. You might be able to see the bits of tissue on there moving. Jumping with mates. It's, yeah, it's uh, not very loud. Yeah, thinking about the jump, thinking about where you need to be and just, you know, well, looking across Well, you can't see it because it's not loud music. enough. That's, that one's working, that one's not. So this is the valve that's working, it's warm, that one's warm too, so they've both got heaters running. I'll swap those two over, that's the easiest thing to start with. Right, let's try that. That's made no difference, I didn't really think it would. Yeah, that one's not working at all. 
So there's something else going wrong here. I've got my meter running here. So I'll just probe around and check some voltages. I've forgotten which are which, but I do know these are the two screens, and I know they are prone to fail. So 193 there, 119 there. So let's go here. Nothing. That's what I thought. Yep, okay, 192. So that one's open, that screen resistor. I'll put two new ones in here. That's 220 yellow, that's 220k. I'll put two new ones in. We'll try that out. I decided to just tack a resistor in there. I'll turn it over later and put it in properly. So we'll give it a shot again. So power on. I'll turn it up. We'll see how it goes. Well, I think to understand that you have to go back to the socialist president it's working of now. France that you'll remember that Meteor yeah, It's not very loud. I don't know, it's about the same. The okay. the so that's fixed that. Retirement age from 65. I'll put it on full power, I think we're okay. It, at the yeah. time so it felt like that's working progress. properly. This Good. Clearly that needs a lot more work. I can see a capacitor there with the end coming out, same as that one. But it will work. It does need a lot of capacitors replaced. Luckily the Philips have these Philips capacitors in them and they, they are pretty reliable. So I'd be able to leave most of those in there. I can see one crack there, which means moisture will get into it eventually. But uh, it looks pretty good otherwise. Fiendishly complicated to understand precisely because of that. Not a lot of volume there. Um, so that'll probably come back once I change all these parts. So very easy fix there. Those two resistors always go high, uh, even on Philips sets supplied to other manufacturers. So I've had this maybe four or five times. So I was pretty sure that was going to be the problem. So I'll flip it over, we'll have a look underneath and see what else needs to be done. Here's the underneath, it's pretty original I think. I uh, can't see a lot going on in there. Some of these, oh that's a new resistor. I was going to say some of these are some more there. So someone's been in here. I don't think they're original. They look way too modern. There's another one here, another one here. Yeah, so somebody's been through this and fixed up a few things. I can see a little slater there, so this has been kept out in a garage or something at some point. Yeah. You don't generally get them running around your lounge room. Seeing someone's already gone through and changed these two, I know usually fail. And um, These guys here usually go to this one here that probably should be changed. Um, there's some more in there. I don't think they're original. They look old though. They've been there a long time. They might be original. I don't know. I'll turn it back again. I was having a look around. I noticed this. There's the original red telltale paste that they put on and it's wound down quite a fair bit. This is the antenna trimmer so you would adjust this at 1500 uh, kilocycles. So I'm not sure why they've had to move that that far. The oscillator behind it hasn't been touched so that's good. If you've seen my videos before you know I don't like playing with these Philips IF transformers. This top part here just disintegrates when you try and turn them. So nobody's touched those. As this is pretty much just a repair video, I'll go through, check some capacitors, check the resistors and replace as necessary. And replace the dial string of course. I'll check the RF alignment which I have to do for the dial string. It'll be interesting to see if that's in the right place.
That little sequence was most of a day's work squeezed into two minutes. Uh, the radio is working. I've had it running for a couple of hours and it's worked fine. The vertical soldering I was doing, I really just tacked them in. I then laid it down flat and went over all the solders that I'd done and a few of the original production solders. The dial string is in two lengths and originally I used the old cord because it was still in pretty good condition and I was going to replace the broken bit. But in the end I changed it to the new string. I didn't want to use the old string. The next thing to do is check the alignment. I know that it's not quite right because it doesn't quite line up with the stations. The instructions say to bottom out this permeability tuning. With that bottom this cursor lines up with the line on the end there. And it should equate to 525 which is what I've got on the frequency generator. So I'll turn it up. And there it is. So I'll just tune away. Yes, that's not quite right. To adjust it we adjust this oscillator trimmer. This will peak it. I'll break that telltale um, paste they got on there. There we go. Turn it up again. There it is. That'll do. I'll wind it up to 1500 and because it's permeability tuning it's very accurate. Well, it normally is very accurate. I've centered it on 38k, that's 1500, and I've reset the generator to 1500. I'll turn it up. That little tool's not going to reach there, I'll do it by hand. Wind that out till we peak this. I can use the tool now. And that's it. That's the alignment. Permeability tuning, so easy to do. It then says to move a little cursor to get the best average station alignment. But I think that'll be okay. I'm not going to move it that tiny bit. I didn't check these IF transformers. They will disintegrate if I try and adjust them anyway. The radio's working well. I'll leave well enough alone. With this working so well, I'm going to pull the record player out. We'll have a look at that. To get the record player, I'll just glide this open. Oh yeah. I think I just cheated on my wife. There's a bit of a trick to getting this turntable out. This platter here would normally have a rubber cover over it, but if you lift it up, it's got two holes in it. And if you line it up, there's a screw in there. If you put a screwdriver in there, you can just loosen it a bit and pull the little plate back. There's some little grips on the side there, it is. And that lets you pull it back. And I just nip it up again so that doesn't try to fall back again. And of course, there's another one somewhere. There it is. And once again, I'll just tighten that up. Uh, there's a transit screw there, I'll undo that as well. I've pushed the wires back inside, so I should be able to lift this out. I have the turntable sitting on a little cushion. I will make one of those little posted stands one day. I'll take the platter off, we'll have a look underneath. Uh, to get the platter off, there's a little circlip there. Get some circlip pliers in there. And the platter should come off. A bit tight there. Okay. There's the idler wheel. It looks good. I can't feel any flat spots on it. So that should clean up. It is slipping though when I tried it, but I'm sure it'll come good. This is the platter thrust bearing here. I'll take the balls out. This is very dry. There's only three. I'll remove that. There's a thrust washer down here and a little rubber vibration damper. That feels pretty good actually, so I might leave that there. For the top here, all I need to do is clean off all this old grease around here and here and re-lubricate it. There's some grease down there. The idler wheel I will take off, give it a quick clean on the edges there, put some rubber renew on it perhaps and put it back together. That should be all right. So mainly it's just cleaning and re-lubricating all this stuff. I'll flip it over. I flipped it over just quickly. There's multiple connections on the back here. Uh, you can change them around to suit your local voltage. Just be aware of that. I've connected them the wrong way before and uh, they get rather warm. Uh, the Phillips mechanism is a bit more complex than say on a Garrard, uh, but it uses a linear cam. The Garrard uses a rotary one. That there is the cam running through here and it has little cutouts uh, for little components to go in and out of. So that just moves up and down and does all the work. When I get it all cleaned and running, we'll do a demo on the cam running. And it's the same as it was on the top. Clean it all off, clean off the old grease, 
re-lubricate it and it'll be good. There's, there'll be nothing wrong with it. There's a little rotor here that moves the arm uh, horizontal to the record and back home. It has a little friction pad on here. That needs to be cleaned, but don't get it wet. It's only made of paper, but it does need to be clean. I'll take this out to my workshop, just brush it down with some oil and grease remover, and I'll come back and we'll start the re-lube. I've cleaned all the grease off and it's looking much better. As you can see, it's cleaned up very nicely. The, the bottom's cleaned up really nicely as well, so I need to just re-grease all the points. I will have to take one or two apart and put some grease inside. Apart from that, most of it will just go straight on the top. The motor bearings have felt oilers inside, so I need to use that little hole to get some oil inside. I've done one of these before in detail. I'll leave a link above to what I did. For this one, I'll do a little video montage. You should be able to see what I'm doing. All right, enough talk. I'll get stuck into it. I hope you enjoyed that. That was about a half a day's work put into about three minutes. I have the record player mounted on the rotogram so I can do some testing. There are a few things I need to point out. This felt is a bit thicker than the original rubber, so this plastic bit is sitting up a little higher. I had to mill out the center. I only took a very small skim off there. That's not very thick there, so if I go too far, I'll go through it. But that's fine now. It's not binding like it was. Another thing is I didn't show all the parts that I lubed. That was just sort of the main one, so I've put them in. There's other spots to do. The manual gives you a pretty good rundown on how to lube it. And it didn't have this little centerpiece here. I machined the new one up, as you saw. Uh, so I'll do a few setups. The first thing I want to do is test the tone arm weight. I have an old record here. I'll use that for testing. So to start, I'll put the scales on the record. I'll turn it on and just place the stylus on there. All right, uh, what have we got? Uh, 4.36. It's a little light. It should be four to six grams. 
um, and around there it should be five. It's a bit light. There's no adjustment for the weight. It's done with this spring here. It says if it's not right, change the spring. I'll see how it goes. Can't do much else. I've put some power on. We'll see if it actually works. That's good. I've got it on 33. I've connected my tracer again, which will deliver some sort of sound. It's not terrific though. So I'll just see if it works. Sounds good. Well, that doesn't sound very good, does it? I'll try a bit further on. Perhaps that's just a bad bit of music. It's not a very good record. It's some sort of Hammond organ record or something. Anyway, it's working. There's a few things I need to do. One is to check the landing point of the stylus and make sure the end of record's working. I think I need to do a stop cycle to get it to just cycle through and reset itself. I'll just lift the stacker there, take this center piece out. I'll just put the uh, stacker post in there. Okay, all right, let's do a cycle. I really don't expect to have to adjust very much on this. Oh, <laughs> okay, missed. Well, they were famous last words. Okay, I'll put it back here. The landing point adjustment is this screw, so I'll give it, I'll give it a turn. So you screw it out to move the stylus in. All right, let's have another go. Oh, that's better. I'll give it another shot, just to make absolutely certain. I did think maybe it was going in a little too far. Nah, that looks pretty good. I might wind it back a fraction. It turns out the music is a harmonica, not a Hammond organ. Uh, either way, it's pretty ordinary. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if the end of record works. So I'll come back when I get close to it. All right, we're just coming up to the end of it now. So I'll just see if it tracks across and it should lift up and return to the cradle. There's the click. Off it goes. Very nice. I thought I'd do a speed test and we'll just see what comes up, but it looks a little fast. So it's high. There's not much you can do about high. Wow is 0.66. I would like to see that a bit lower than that. I downloaded a speed tester sheet from Vinyl Engine. So we'll see how that compares. I need to turn on a fluorescent light. It's definitely going fast. Those lines, the black lines, should be stationary. So if I slow it down with my finger, I can stop them, I can go backwards. Yeah, it should be there. So it is going too fast. I'm not sure what to do with a motor that's going too fast. Too slow I can fix, but too fast there's not much you can do. I believe that at that speed it won't be very noticeable, much more than that will start sounding like Elvin and the Chipmunks. So the best thing I can do is put a record on and just see what it sounds like. I have this record on and it's got a bit of violin which normally you can hear the wow. And I can't hear it, I'll play it a bit longer, I can't keep it running because of the copyright issue. I can't hear a lot wrong with that, but I'm sure other people can. You can probably pick up a little bit of wow in there. I've got a bit of Dean Martin here. See what he sounds like. Once again, I've got copyright issues, so I can only play a few seconds. Now I've chopped that record up a bit so that it won't get picked up by the copyright. I think it sounds pretty good. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm sorry, I'll just break in here for a minute. 
This bit of video was shot after I finished the whole project and I went back to it because I wasn't happy with the amount of wow it had in it. It was up near 0.6% uh, and generally these run somewhere near the 20% bit less perhaps and one of the ways to address this on the Phillips is to make sure the idler wheel axle is perfectly vertical. I've drilled a 3mm hole into a bit of aluminium round stock and I'll put it over the top here. It's a good fit on there and I can check to see if that's vertical. I have a little square here and you can see that in fact it's out. I have a little tool here I've made up for other Phillips decks and I can just bend this at the gooseneck and try and make it vertical. Now I know that's hard for you to see but actually that's pretty good. And I know you can't see it all in here. It, that's pretty good. It is leaning back slightly. I'll see if I can bring it forward a bit. Now I adjusted this a few times and I cut it out. You don't want to watch me adjusting that. That's, um, but that's now, that's pretty good actually, looking at the back there. I've been back and forth adjusting this and it's pretty good now. I'll put the platter back on and see how it goes now. I've got my phone on there, I'm just checking the wow. Let's see what we've got here. A 2.2%. That's much better. Uh, what's that, two thirds drop in, uh, in the wow. That's around what I thought I should get. I'm very happy with that. So on that note, let's return to the video. Let's see if we can see this cam operating the various parts here. I'm going to spin the platter by hand. If I use the motor, it'll go too fast. The first thing we do is push this start lever. That operates that switch, starts the motor running. This kicks something in. I can't quite remember what, but it engages the gear system. So if I spin it now, you can see that linear cam running down there. And it's just operating various things, lifting the tone arm. Uh, it's measuring the size of the disc and it'll come back and the tone arm should be on the record and now it plays so the platter's gone free it'll just spin so that's a linear cam in the Phillips the garage uses a circular one the record player is working nicely I am going to put it back in the cabinet installation is just the reverse of how I took it out so we'll have a look at it when it's installed I remounted the record player in the cabinet and even without putting a record on the hum from the amp was way too much. This is the bottom of the socket of the AX12 which controls the music center part of this radiogram and from the plate to ground is this capacitor to drain off a bit of noise. In some literature I found from Philips it says to replace this 0 0.022 with a 0 0.01. So I'll do that and hopefully that'll fix the problem. The new capacitor's in, I've even got the foil in down to ground, so I'll see how that works. I've mounted all the parts back into the cabinet and it's working beautifully. The hum that was in the record player is gone, it's completely gone, so replacing the capacitor fixed that. I also changed the dial cord again, I had the thin one in there and it didn't run on the spindle as well, uh, the thicker cord works much better. Just looking at the front of it here, you can see the material's damaged on both sides. The owner said he's not too worried about it and that's up to him. But cleaned up, these sets look magnificent. First up, I'll try the radio. Regularly, really tight um, uh, program and time space in May. When I get home and get bored, I put the um, I put the old CD on. Live. This Graham has the best sounding AM I've heard. I'll put it over to Graham. Just to note, that door is not electric or automatic. As you can see, I've already got a record in here. I'll just turn it up. And, of course, I'm not allowed to play any music. Here's another bit of the same record. Ever cloy. This odd diversity of music. Diana sounds like she's in the room with me. Amazing track. That's another project finished. I hope the owner's happy with it. I certainly would be. I love these grams. As I said earlier, I've done two of these radiograms before. I'll put some links up on the screen if you want to watch the earlier ones. I hope you enjoyed watching me do this one, and I hope you can join me next time for my next radio adventure. Well, you can cry me a river.